Hey everyone, it's Chris here from Everyday Survival Gear. Um, today I'm just going to go over a few different things actually. Um, not a review as such, so yeah. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank all my new subs. And all my subs, I love all the comments and whatnot. I think now I've gotten uh, quite a few people to join BLF. So uh, I'm not sure if that's what SB wants or not but yeah it's good to see the forum growing and like my little viewer, viewer base is getting bigger and yeah um so yeah lately i've been doing so many reviews that i haven't really had time to go over my own stuff as such so i'm gonna give my own stuff a go and um yeah keep the reviews coming i got out two in like less than a week Man, it's 1am, he's driving around that loud. Come on, pull your head in. Uh, so, he's backfiring. So, yeah, uh, basically, yeah. Um, we'll go over a few different mods, uh, a few different builds. Uh, we'll go over your basic, your drivers, and whatnot. And hopefully, that will get you in the loop. Um, basically, I'm like still a noob. I can tell you a few more technical things. Um, than what I could at the start when I started my channel, but I'm still not the best Yeah, I can build my own lights and stuff, but um, yeah <clears throat> um, Actually, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you a build I started for a BLF comp that I never actually finished Because um, I didn't have the parts to finish it Basically, I brought a driver that I was pretty excited about from Fast Tech, but when they sent it, it got broken in the mail which is pretty funny because I brought a um, ten dollar LED, no sorry, eight dollar, eight US dollar dollar LED from Fastech, uh, XPLHI three thousand K tin. Now uh, on a copper MCPB with direct thermal path, so pretty much copper is what you want if you're gonna run um, direct drive or anything over a certain amount of current. No, oh, pardon me. Um, from just about from something like we'll say from about four amps upwards. You're probably going to get a little bit better output um, running on a copper board. So yeah, um, the direct thermal path is just the way it sits on the actual board. So the LED has solder in between it. Um, and it can kind of sit above the board or it can sit inside the board. So you get better heat transfer. Um, that's what the direct thermal path means. Nothing like too technical there. Um, yeah, so um, I got that and that wasn't working either. But um the other day I whipped out my um, soldering iron <clears throat> and um, I done like four hours of soldering and a bit of different work and uh, yeah I basically got that lantern that I started talking about and then I kind of got away from myself there uh, the lanterns like it's not done because I want to put it all together properly but it's working again I kind of just let it go because I couldn't finish it uh, yeah I haven't had the spare cash to go out there and buy all the parts that I want um, I've still got like five or six LEDs sitting here, but I've actually got no free drivers, so I'll probably put an order in at Banggood and get some um, direct drives soon. Uh, I probably might get not like only direct drives, I'll probably get some um, 7135s, I'll get some Nang's um, 104s, are they 103s? Um, yeah, um, I'll get some of them. And um, I've got like 15 71 35 trips that I brought from Fast Tech, and I've only used about four. I brought um, Convoy S2 Pluses like fully assembled, but they didn't have um, three amps worth of chips, they only had like two amps. So I ended up putting three extra chips inside um, the uh, driver, so they are about three amps, a little bit over now. Um, I tried to stack those 7135s and I do not have the steadiest hands so I cannot do it at all. It's pretty hard for me to stack 7135s even if I try it the good way. I know how to do it and in principle it should work but it's still a bit of a pain. I have stacked them before but it, I remember it did take me a long time. Maybe if I'd done it like every day for a while I'll be good at stacking 7135s but they're kind of like... Uh, obsolete not obsolete driver but there's no need right now for you to go stacking 20 7135s or 21 7 35s so 10 7135s would be 3.8 amps if you're running the so that would be like a 8 amp driver almost so you know instead of doing that which is going to cost you a bit 
um, you can basically just get a direct drive now, which is fairly cheap, uh, and that'll be a lot easier than stacking 7135 chips. So yeah, um, I'm kind of blabbering on. I don't want this video to be too long because upload times are horrible. I only got ADSL 2. So whenever I do like a 30 minute review, um, you can imagine uploading it is like eight hours, nine hours to upload it. So yeah, um, I'll show you the um, lamp that I built and we'll go over what it has and I'll try and work out how I'm going to finish it in front of you guys. All right guys, so this was the idea and how it started. Not how it started, this is how it ended out. Um, basically, it's a hurricane lantern as you would call it. Um, I brought it from my retail shop here, um, and then I pretty much parted out a bunch of different things um, just to kind of fabricate parts for this. Uh, basically, so it runs on 18650s, uh, electronic switch driver here, so that's the driver here. Uh, in its current form, it does work, but obviously it doesn't look the best. Um, so building it was kind of a challenge because I didn't want it to be like off the shelf but I wanted it to work to where I could actually use it as a lantern and you know be happy with it obviously no point of building anything I'm not going to use it um most lights that I build myself they get a fair amount of use my C8 has a lot of uh, use on it um my Eagle Eye X6s and even lights that I don't build like the BLF A6 but I've modded it myself they get quite a bit of use to. Uh, we'll put the battery in and I'll show you that it does work. Senio cell that I salvaged. I don't know, like people overseas, you can always find like cells and stuff, but here in Australia, it's a bit hard. All right, so uh, it's about, technically it should be, look at that PWM. Technically it should be a three amp driver but I don't think it's doing about 3M, so I think it's doing more about 2, 2.4 maybe. Um, XP G3 in here. Yeah, it's got a blinky too. So it works, and like it's fairly bright actually for a lantern. Like if I turn off this light, I don't mind that. And if I turn off the other light that I use, um, that's it on. So you know, like, uh, we'll move it back a little bit. So obviously there's more than enough light around the whole room for you to still see a bit. Don't mind that. So that's my mirror. Actually, yeah, so you can see there is still enough light for you to use this as a proper lantern. Um, yeah, um, the driver that I brought from um, Fastech, I actually fixed it. It was just a capacitor that came off. I'm not sure if it's working. I'll probably try that now and see if it's working. Uh, Cause I've got a XHP 50 here, so I wouldn't mind to use that in this. But I feel that this is enough light. It's probably about a thousand lumens, 800. So yeah, um, I'll turn back on all the lights now. It, like, you can hold the lantern like this. This is why we love it. Hold it. Ooh. It's cool. Yeah, so the way the lantern is, it's functional and it works. Um, only a few issues. Obviously, you don't want to carry around the battery pack by itself. Um, the switch, it's electronic switch, which is pretty much what you want in this setup. Um, you don't need an electronic switch, but it does kind of make it easier. Uh, you can see it's like live now, so yeah. Um, placement of the switch is a bit hard because... I pretty much got to fabricate my own parts, which I don't mind, but um, I was having trouble of how I wanted to make it because I wanted to leave this looking at least kind of original, um, if not fully stock, uh, which I can't do with this setup right now. But I was thinking it, I wouldn't mind to run it on standard alkaline batteries or uh, NIMS instead, but uh, I think 18650 is probably the way to go anyway. Um, basically, if I did decide to keep it like this, um, I've already got it marked here, so you can see, hopefully you guys can see that, um, I could cut that out right now, you know, and um, just put the battery pack inside there, 
I could pretty easily even just place, so obviously these cords have to be a lot shorter. <clears throat> put these cords in, suddenly get rusty. Um, probably put something around this so it doesn't short out. But basically throw this there. Uh, and then the switch will just sit here. And I've got a few spare rubber boots um, <clears throat> inside the pack that I could put over this and then kind of glue it down. And make it look stock, but um, yeah, it's one of those things. <clears throat> I kind of really want to get it finished, so it's no longer like a work in progress. It's actually finished. Uh, let's take it apart, and you'll see how it actually works quickly. See, misconception is that lots of people think you know if you're gonna mod that you gotta like build a ten thousand lumen light, and then that's modding. When I first started, yeah, like that was modding, but I don't really feel that that is what modding is about. Modding is about making something how you want it. So, um, that's it there, the XPJ3. It's on a heat sink. I already have modded this to fit this down there. Um, there was another metal bit that sat down the bottom here, uh, across, and uh, if that was still in the way, uh, it wouldn't have worked. So, yeah. Um, right now, I'm just thinking, you know, like, how do I want to finish this and whatnot. So, without the light on, uh, sorry, without the, uh, filter, it works like so. You can put the filter on over the top. Which kind of evens out the beam a little bit. It's still fairly bright, as you guys can see. Uh, yeah. So I'm um, basically I'll finish this and I'll make a series out of this. Oh, it's stuck. And um Yeah, I don't even know. I think I'm gonna ruin this one and I'm gonna have to go buy another one, which I don't mind, they're in like fifteen dollars anyway. Um but yeah, so I wouldn't mind actually to get a bigger version of this. There's one size bigger and try it in that and see how it goes. But I'm not even sure. Hmm. Alright guys, basically there's no time like the present to start. So um, we might as well um, get a move on I guess. Um, anyone looking for a soldering iron, I'd say check out one of these. You can get them fairly cheap. Um, you can see the model number there, uh, 973D. Uh, it's basically, it's a rebranded wa Wahua or Wahia, um, and it's got the Japanese tips. Um, it cost me 55 Aussie dollars, so it's fairly cheap. Considering the last one that I brought cost me about 30 and it was an absolute piece of junk. Um, with this thing, it's made life like so much easier. You can fit on the Hako tips, so right now I've got a Hako tip on there. The other one I had no option to change the tips. Um, kind of like when you want to solder um, your driver into the pill, like what I did on the S2s the other day, um, you kind of want to have a pretty fat tip so you can get enough heat into the actual uh, pill because um, those S2s don't have a retaining ring, so you got to solder them down. Um, I reckon we just take out the battery for safety. Um, we'll undo the positive and the negative from here quickly. Probably undo it from the LED too. So <clears throat> I should probably put some solder on this, but it should be sweet, I guess. Eh, I might tin it. Give it a sec to warm up a bit. It's actually really, really quick. Ah, uh, buddy, blue pack. Yeah, this is untaught. Now that's hot enough. That was quick, right? All right, that's positive, negative there. Um. All right, guys. Um, I was having a few little connection issues, so I pretty much stopped that then. Um, I basically choose off camera. Um, what I think is going to work the best, whichever driver. And have a look at which one's gonna fit. 
And then um, we'll get started again. Because, you know, there's no point of, like, you guys being bored about if you're actually going to watch this uh, about it. So, yeah. I just don't want like way too sharp corners so I can kind of put my fingers there now and they're not going to get absolutely obliterated like what they were this is how you work on stuff like a man in your hands not Actually, it feels a lot safer now. There's still like that little sharp bit there. I should probably get that little bit. Let's finish it off. That's not perfect, but it's okay. It still feels like a can, but it works probably better than what it was. Um, yeah. So, I don't really need to take the LED off anyway, but we shall. Uh, what do I need to do? I don't even need to do anything there because it's already done. What? So this is the um, XPG3. If you look on the back, you can see it's a 3A tint. Um, yeah, so it is alloy. I think it actually has a layer of copper. You can't see it, but there is a layer of copper there. I've cut into one of these in the past. Um, and then, yeah, uh, if I really wanted to, I could go with a few different drivers, especially considering that they're all going to fit anyway. Whoops. Um, probably, you know, if you're going to go for one, that's another XPG3, XPLH, XPLHI, um, XML2, so the XHP50 is in the other one then. So, yeah, plonk this on. Uh, 20mm board too, I think. Yeah, it is. And Bob's your auntie. XHP50 uh, lamp with 2000 lumens. Oddly, about somewhere around about there. Um, to me personally, I feel like it was already bright enough, so I don't really need to use this. But um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Alright, guys, I'll edit this together. Um, then I'll put it online and I'll see how it looks. Uh, if it's good, I'll keep it. If not, I'll uh, fling it off and don't worry about this. Um, yeah, I could probably just put all the pieces together um, and then just build it in front of you, but it's not going to be as much fun then. Well, at least that's how I would like to see it being done, um, part by part. So, yeah, uh, little things I've already done in the past, obviously, like I took this part off the wick. Um, that is like second hand. Uh, basically this whole build is second hand pretty much. Only thing I brought new was the driver and the LED. Um, everything else is kind of like second hand. Um, even these wires that I got hooked up to this driver now, um, they were from an old PS2 power cord that I took out and I was just going to use those. Um, yeah, I reckon I'll get cracking and I'm going to try and get more parts put together. And then I'll get back to you and we'll make part number two. Alright, thanks for watching guys.